all right so uh, so this tight this talk is titled uh, js you can reason about uh, so uh, so this phrase reason is a very important thing when we program uh, when you write a piece of code you should be able to reason about it let's say i write a function called add right or a very simple function called add and i actually do multiplication inside and uh, let's say you know what uh, uh, i am able to like run it for uh, i mean i ask my developers to do it and after some time i come and uh, integrate and find that you know instead of passing one and one i get one uh, two back i get one back and then like so uh, the the fact about reasonability is uh, if something works it it works as expected that is what i mean by reason here so we'll see how uh, pure script makes javascript reasonable reasonable in a very broad way right okay so let's check your javascript skills can anyone tell what is the output of this parse int of string 10 10 all right yeah nothing no that's it this one all right yeah yeah all right so now um let's oops now uh, let's close this copy this and run it on our console Are you able to see this when i said oh okay I, i don't know how to like uh okay right so when you said parse int it did one thing when you run it over a list of 10 Then repeat it four times. This is what you get. So this is what I'm saying. It's not being reasonable. You say one thing, and later when you do something else, you're like kind of like saying no, it's ten and something else, right? So yeah. So coming back to what where we were. All right. So then yeah, we have all this. I, I don't know how to like. So this is like the falseness of uh, this thing. This is like a very debatable thing. Really, this thing, whatever. And it's all like summarized in this one. this kind this picture kind of like summarizes it right so have you guys have you i mean everyone in their lives would have faced this right so uh, but but the thing is javascript is actually a good language the the base i mean like today i don't have to like uh, build an app i don't i don't have powerpoint this is like linux i don't i don't have any other way of presenting right i mean the web is a very good uh, place to be JavaScript is a very uh, very good uh, language and it's a platform in itself. But coding in JavaScript is a problem. So uh, so that's where like all these compiled JavaScript languages came about. And one of them is Pure Script. So Pure Script is a pure functional language. So when I say pure, uh, it is able to uh, separate the uh, the side effects from uh, the parts of the code which will do a side effect versus the parts of the code which will not do a side effect. that's what i say it's pure uh, so that's where the pure script comes from it is inspired by haskell if people know about it like it's a it's another pure functional language that that's a, a lazily evaluated language when i say lazily it's like it won't even evaluate some parts of the code if you like write 100 lines of code and like finally not use and do it it will kind of like short circuit and say hey everything is fine that but that's this is not that i mean like uh, pure script actually behaves like javascript compiles to javascript has easy uh, javascript foreign function interface so that's it uh so that's about uh pure script okay now uh, there are a lot of uh, js compiled to js languages today uh just take two uh, closure script uh, uh closure script is not static uh it's closure it's lisp uh, it it gives a lot of flexibility but it actually doesn't avoid a lot of uh, bugs so types can actually avoid a whole class of bugs we'll we'll see it later uh during the talk as to how it can avoid some bugs uh pure script is pure when i say it's pure yeah uh, you have, when you are doing a side effect when you're saying like i'm going to uh, mutate this global variable you just cannot have a function and then uh, call it i mean the 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 name itself the type signature itself will like kind of like shout saying that this is a very impure function and the way you use impure functions is different so we'll see about typescript versus uh, pure script so this is from real code on github This is the JavaScript version of it. This is the uh, this is the TypeScript version of it. So this is TypeScript. Uh, so sometimes you can get more uh, verbose than uh, uh, JavaScript itself, uh, and it's actually 
I mean, uh, I mean, uh, wh- why do we like need to write? So, I mean, I'm, I'm not a big expert on TypeScript itself. I've not used TypeScript myself. I just like done some research to figure out uh, uh, for this talk uh, how I can compare it against. So, it, it is verbose. The and this is a quote by Helen Keller. The only thing worse than being blind is having vision, but n- having sight, but no vision. So, uh, in PureScript, you have types. But the types do not help you a lot. So let, let, let me like uh, show you some code snippets. So uh, yeah, this is the. So this. Uh, so this is some TS uh, TypeScript. Uh, I don't know like how many of you like seen TypeScript. So this is a function. So uh, I don't know like I've talked to someone in the morning about why it's actually valid, but I couldn't get a sample. So here I'm actually saying that person is a question mark person, not a normal person. It's a question mark person. person. Is like I can't pass null, all right. But here I'm actually like calling hello person, and uh, but the, the 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 TypeScript compiler doesn't. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, the TypeScript compiler doesn't actually like tell me when I compile that it's actually wrong, even though I've enabled strict null checks, strict proper. I mean, like a lot of other things. So, uh, so I mean, uh, and and there are other other things as well, like. Um, um, so, okay, that's, and for this example, let's say X, uh, you kind of like say zero, one and a uh, user. I mean, uh, I mean, this is okay for hacky code. Let's say you are doing something, you're just uh, trying something on ASCII, uh, 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 gig school and stuff like that, it's fine. Uh, but it's actually like not okay to push this in production. Right. I mean, like if you push this to production and, and it's, I mean, of course it's a tuple of three things. It's a number, probably it's the age, it's just number one right? user itself so but but you cannot like push this to production right i mean code like this right and uh, i mean this is a thing about arrays itself in javascript and uh, okay so this is something around uh, properties not being initialized properly but i think it, this is a very optional uh, uh, parameter you uh, flag you have to set while you are doing uh, uh, checking uh, the other one important thing is like this so, so here I've declared D1 as any, and I've said D1 is two, the next line, and I'm saying let D is equal to D1 minus uh, two, it compiles. It's actually, it actually gives you zero for some reason. I don't know what will happen if you like change this to uh, F or something like that, right? So, I mean, I, I don't even want to try that. Uh, let's, let's assume it's two, but this one, this gives me a compilation error. This is a compilation error. So I say two minus two, it's a compilation error, but if I, this is fine. I don't know. I mean, like, I'm not a TypeScript expert. Probably there are some reasons why they did this. And uh, yeah, similarly, this one. This is a problem, but the next line is not a problem. So, this is what I'm saying. You have sight, but no vision. I mean, Probably the I'm not I'm not blaming the TypeScript compiler guys. They did it for a reason. They did it all, but like I'm saying, like it can be better. That's what I'm saying. So the TypeScript, you trust the developers to write the proper types, which are yeah, and you trust someone else to make sure that they are actually correct. So and immutability is only by choice. Immutability is not built into the language itself. Uh, uh, so there is a is any and unknown are like new things which are which can have some problems. Uh, and what is the surprising thing is like it is actually a superset of JavaScript. When you say JavaScript is a very unreasonable language and you're building something on top of that, you're not solving the underlying problem. You're just like adding something, you're adding some parts of it as you're saying is this thing, but like I can just cannot like uh, finally say that, okay, if this compiles, okay, it's like I'm reasonably sure it'll work, right? And the last part is like, yeah, there is no production, protection against side effects, that, that I'll see. So, um, so this is a piece of code in JavaScript, and this is the same thing in yeah, probably TypeScript or JavaScript. Uh, it's TypeScript. Uh, so this is how we do add two numbers in JavaScript. Uh, just say add x x x, x comma y x space y is equal to x plus y, and uh, yeah, something like this you do. Let's say tomorrow for some reason uh, you get a new developer, and that guy decides, okay, let me like cache the results of the addition, and let me save it, and then like. Instead of doing an addition, I'll look in the cache, all right? And this cache could be like a 
a global cache it could be like a over your rest api or whatever and he does something like this in in uh, typescript your type signature still doesn't change if you still think uh, about it it takes two numbers and gives you back a number it still hasn't changed one bit but you are doing much more than what you are supposed to do add right you can't do this in fiasco when you are doing this in fiasco this is how you do it in fiasco so you are like kind of like looking up and like you know you get a maybe the colors and the maybe is like blah, 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 blah. when you are doing this your your type signature changes from int to int to int so don't worry worry about int to int to int just think about int comma int just repeating the first uh, arrow with a comma i'll tell you why it's arrow that way is int comma int to int to uh, int comma int to effect of int uh, because you are actually doing an effect this code won't even compile if you ca call it int to int to int right and that is important now looking at the type signature i can kind of say whether this code is going to do something not what it's supposed to do i mean of course it can't still do add and multiply and things like that because they are still going to give you numbers anyway but you can kind of like do i mean they are not the big problems today if you are going and changing something in the database or you know you are uh, making a api call or something like that that's that's going to be like bad so so this is called an effect so so whatever io you do is called an effect so there is a i mean so in fact there is a better way of doing it so so this actually takes says it takes two integers and this is uh, something called the state monad don't worry about the word so basically it says that state using a cache token as a state it gives you back an integer basically this function is going to access something in a cache which is of type cached result that's what it means all right but it's finally going to give you an int so don't worry about the details we'll go over that later and uh, you'll uh, so more brownie points here you get more concise syntax uh, the compiler doesn't let you push incomplete functions through so uh, i'll i'll give you an example here uh, so let's say okay how many of you have heard of the fizzbuzz problem okay so basically it's like given an integer if it's a multiple of 15 print fizzbuzz if it's a multiple of 3 print fizz if it's a multiple of 5 say buzz otherwise just print the number that's what is the problem right it's a it's a starting starter problem sort of thing and uh, this is how you enumerate uh, so basically this fizz buzz is actually the outputs can be enumerated as fizz or buzz or fizz buzz or non fizz buzz with an integer that's what it means <coughs> and uh, let's say uh, so this kind of does everything so so this is how you write so this is a pattern where you say if it is a uh, if the remainder is uh, with 3 is 0 and 5 is 0 blah 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 blah, blah. so let's say for some reason you uh, and you have this like beautiful uh, type annotation it says it's a int to fizzbuzz all right and basically this is the compiler we look at this guy all right and there will be like some marks here which will go red when things break all right and let's say we don't handle this case we don't uh, we don't handle this case what happens is that the type signature itself changes the type signature says a case expression could not be determined to cover all inputs all right so and uh, what it says is like uh, plus the same thing and it says alternatively add a partial constraint so you can just say uh, ap apply the suggestion uh, oops i think so now it's happy so now it's a partial function what this actually means is that let's say you have a array of uh, numbers and you want to map over that array and you want to run this function fizzbuzz all right so we'll ask the pure script compiler what it thinks is the uh, type signature of this and it will say it's actually partial because this guy is partial right so now let's let's complete i mean so so you you understand right i mean like every every let's say there is something which is incomplete anyone which calls something incomplete is definitely going to be incomplete because you don't know at run time what numbers will come right so let's let's complete this and we can remove the uh, let's come back here i have removed it okay so this is sorry so this was right um so then we say p add type so now it's fizzbuzz so we'll go and ask uh add type oops sorry okay fine so you can say it's like a it's a list uh, array of um 
no, sorry uh, uh, yeah right so make sense so we we completed the case here this guy called it as the correct type because the partial is gone now this guy will become a uh, consumer function now now no more partial and the thing is you can't like push a partial function to main main expects a real function if main has a partial function it kind of like throws up and i mean you'll have to use some weird stuff to get rid of it but don't do that all right and uh, the next thing i want to talk about is uh type hole driven development right so now let's say this so so it's not about just type checking you can actually ask the compiler what functions i have to write at this point of time let's say you have uh so uh so you have this uh you you tell that x is going to be an array of fizzbuses all right and you have the function fizzbus all right and uh, you are going to like run it over the array 1 you have the input array 1 to 100 but you don't know what function to actually add here so the 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 pure script compiler will actually tell you that this is the function you have to, the, this is the function signature you have to add it has to be like think of it think of it as like two functions uh, two arguments it takes a array of integers uh, the second argument the first argument is a higher order function which is like from int to fizzbus right and it finally returns an array of fizzbus this is actually map map actually like does this right so and it in, and it has told you that yeah. this one it says map is something you can actually use i mean other things are there but finally yeah i mean like they are all like versions of map you can think of it so you can actually like go and like um uh, so yeah so so this is how powerful the pure script compiler is right so i've just given you a gist of what it can actually do so so when i said the ast and you know you can go and fiddle with a part of the ast and all those things this guy actually has it so you can actually like go and like it, it knows that this is in a, in a huge 100000 lines part of uh, project it is optimized so that like you know if you change only one part of it it knows that that is the only one part of the subtree that has to change and all those things so yeah so so and the thing is like the type inference mechanism is strict when i say strict no uncaught values no side effects escape all those things are embedded into the language you don't need an external framework to tell you that you don't need immutable uh, j uh, data structures as a, a library all those things are not needed everything is baked into the language right so here are some more points okay so this is a quote by oscar wilde a good friend will always stab you in the front so so typescript will be a good friend to you i'm telling you see because like uh, it will tell you that this is wrong you cannot i mean it's like not you can like you know you, you can cover it up you can push it to production you know later when things break yeah see sort of thing like this is like say you know you can't push this this is not what you say it is right so that kind of strictness is available here and something like this i mean uh, so in javascript let's say you're writing employee name is paul company just pay and you say log the employee's email right this is actually a compiler i mean that's it also probably allows you to do i'm not sure but yeah when I mean, these these can be caught i mean and this these are the, not the only things these are i mean like there are much more farther uh, things you can do in javascript uh, so i uh, you can find uh, it is better debugging as well so as as in your type you type something you can kind of like no the the compiler will tell you like you know this is not expected this is not expected he's basically stabbing you in the front end he's like saying you know do it properly do it properly right so and it's like uh, better development cycles so the compiler guides you all right and let's finally talk about at just pay how we use pure script uh so looking at the type signature it tells a lot about the uh, function itself so uh so what happens in jaspay is like we are a payments company i'm sure most of you have heard of jaspay we do a lot of integrations lot of banks lot of merchants lot of gateways like so much of transformations right and you know what we actually have a lot of interns working on this we have a lot of interns guys who are like just out of college who can just hack things and get things done but our type system can i mean but you really can't do really that bad in a pure function when i say pure function a function which doesn't have effects right 
so you just can't like you know go and like modify some global mutable variables and you know things like that so of course there are uh, things you can do but like most of things are like uh, so that so this is this has been our three pronged approach so we write tests for our pure code uh, we review our impure code and we just keep the impurities to a minimum and at the fringes right uh, we write production ready code we are not like saying okay we'll do this today and uh, it will probably not work tomorrow and all those things when something works today it is guaranteed to work tomorrow that's the guarantee which i i'm sure like the pyascal compiler can give uh oh the next point is something very interesting we did so this is a i mean we we to be honest like we don't have a lot of tests we don't have a lot of test data because like uh, things come and go and like keep changing so what we do is like we have a layer through which we have separated out the pure and the impure functions right uh, think of it as a wall through which like everything goes here and comes out and we we kind of like put a tap and we kind of like capture all the data which goes through and uh, we actually put this on production and we've got all the data we wanted and those are our actual test cases so now we have like millions of test cases which we can run on our local laptop without even writing one line of test so this is because we were able to separate out the pure functions and the impure functions through a in clean interface and this is i mean i, I mean like let's say uh, in, in in any other language you need a lot of discipline to do this right and but this is like enforced by the compiler right uh, and uh, okay and another thing i just want to like uh, show to you uh, so there is this thing called pursuit it's a it's an online uh, uh, documentation viewer for pure script so here you can just search for names anyway you can just search for map it will tell you what map is uh you can also do something weird so you can like like do something i, I don't know if I, some, something like this exists for something else you can actually say okay i have two integers uh, i want another integer just give me all the functions you know i mean then it says power repeat power add append const all those things are there so so let's say you you i mean like most of the times i i i work on haskell and uh, uh pure script sometimes i don't remember the name of the function so not, not sometimes it's like this is a very uh this is a very uh common function which you have to use you have a number which is a decimal and then like you know you need to come to convert it i mean it's called different things in haskell it's called different things in this thing so you just i just type the sec type signature i know what function i have to use right i i'm not sure like if any other language has this you guys should like give the type signature and you can get the all the functions exactly because like this is like it takes types so seriously right so so this is one of it uh, okay so like i just go through uh, types in pure script what they actually mean so they are all like derived from the set theoretic background uh, what that means is that uh, uh, there are mostly three types of uh, uh, three kinds of types uh, so one is called the sum type sum type is like an enumeration so your fizzbuzz was a enumeration uh, so you can do something like this uh, um, uh, or its product types this is basically tuples or your records uh, it's basically like a uh, uh, cartesian product in your set theory uh, parlance uh, also you have the function types so these are mappings final uh, things are mappings so these are actually you can think of it as tabulations uh, the the good thing about th these things is like you can define these uh, in your application um, and this is some the function type itself is provided by the compiler you can't like define your own function type you can define these yourself uh, the either and the tuple because there is something called the uh, I mean, let's not go there. Uh, so, okay, let's let's view uh, functions in details. So, I told you to forget that arrow and set comma, right? So, so uh, how many of you heard of this term called currying? Okay. Oh, most. Okay, good. Very good. So, yeah. So then I don't have to explain this. So, all functions are curried. Uh, for those of you who, uh, so curried is like it always takes one argument and returns back one argument. So, what that other the return argument could be actually a function, right? So that's how you do multi-parameter. Uh, multi argument functions so add can be written in any of these three ways you can you can do like this or you can do the lambda so this is the lambda syntax so the lambda syntax uh, so what you get as a side effect is that you get a uh, partial application for free partial application is like uh, where you have applied only certain arguments other arguments are actually free so uh, so for so using this add i can now uh, define increment as just say add 1 i've just partially applied the first argument the second ar so basically like if you look at this i've i've just applied one thing this thing is a function it will be you know why it will be the next number 
right so uh, and uh, for example uh, the last one so this you have your reduce i mean like i'm sure you've heard of the reduce so think of folderless reduce and uh, so you have a function which takes a list of integers and gives a sum so oh by the way this is actually the function which actually adds this is the function it's actually a the if you if you look at it um uh, um uh, type of add uh, is, I mean, forget this semiring a and all, it's like, think of semiring a as like uh, a as int. So it's basically like a function that takes two int and uses that right? So, so basically that's a function. So you don't need any extra syntax around it, extra uh, things around it. So you don't have to like say function add or plus. So, 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 it's, so defining a function is very lightweight in JavaScript, just like one word, that's it. So most of the times code, code looks like this. So if you look at the standard libraries, it's like all like two lines functions, that's it, right? Uh, so, so this, the, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's uh, deep down, uh, deep dive. Um, so then we'll uh, look at pattern matching. Uh, so when you have immutable data, you can kind of like look at their, how they were constructed. You can kind of, instead of just constructing data, you can actually kind of deconstruct the data and then you can like see how they were constructed and then use them to, run your functions. So this is a, so this is an enumeration of direction. I just use the short form. Uh, then, uh, coordinates is actually a product of two things, two integers. And, uh, yeah, look, note the currying here. So let's say I want to do, for, define a function move, uh, which takes a direction and returns a coordinate to coordinate function. So this is what I mean by pattern matching. You ask the direction what I'm made of. Are you a north or a south or a east or west? And based on that, you can this is also pattern matching. You are capturing the uh, the arguments in a in terms of the same case. You are capturing them as variables and like using them on the right hand side of the equation. So this is uh, this I uh, this I kind of uh, have. Uh, this is what is pattern matching. So and pattern matching has to be complete. So when you don't handle cases like we did in Fizzbuzz, you will actually get a partial error, and you have to fix the partial error before pushing to perfection. Um, so now let's say we want to define a function called move north and you just apply the north thing, right? And uh, so then let's say, uh, okay, the next thing is like the function composition operator. So this triple greater than or triple less than are the uh, composition operators. So this uh, this one is like uh, apply f first and then b. This is like apply b and then f. So, and let's say you want to define a function called northeast, move northeast. You can just say move north composed with move east. So it will still be a coordinates to coordinates function, right? It's it's so easy to create new functions from new. After all, that's what we code for, right? I mean, like we just need more functionality. We just need more, you know, of these things. And it's so easy to create in JavaScript. So I don't know, like how many of you have heard of this, like maybes and optionals and in other languages? Yeah, yeah. So, like, I mean, even TypeScript has something like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of languages actually have this. Like, Scala has it. Uh, probably Java is also getting it. I think they have the optional. I think in like some library, I think like they have it. So, so this is so 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 uh, so maybe uh, are a uh, are. A, are used to tell that this value can actually be null. So maybe A is not the same as A. Let's say you do a API call to get some data. You get some data, you don't know if it's null. You decode it as a maybe A. Instead of saying decode directly to the A, you see, because like at the end, and the thing is like you uh, take this function exam, uh, and the thing is like, um, you kind of like say, uh, if it is just do something, if it is nothing, do something else. So when you use the just constructor to deconstruct it, you know for sure that there is a value. So there is no null pointer exception there. There is no nulls in JavaScript. There's no nulls, no undefined. All these things are just not there. So when you write a function like divide, which can divide two numbers, and you get, so this is how you can actually do. You can actually have your internal function. You cannot do a have undeclared. There's no variables as such. Once a value is created, 
it stays the same throughout its lifetime. There is no variables. There is no mutation. It still compiles to JavaScript. It's like JavaScript is the compiler, right? So it's like your Kubernetes still runs on real AWS machines. It's still immutable. Though, right? So think of that. Think of it that way. I mean, like, it, don't don't worry about the uh, implementation. Like, I, I can always go back. I mean, I can always like brute forcefully generate some code which says that if it is nothing, do this. If it is just do this. Just that I want a cleaner programming platform. It finally, runs on JavaScript. JavaScript is this thing, even, it's, the underlying assembly is even worse, right? I mean, like, finally, like, yeah, I mean, it's there. I mean, like, but this is just a, a more higher level language. That's what I'm saying. Huh. See, uh, okay, the, 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 uh, there's nothing inbuilt in the pure uh, JavaScript compiler. Everything is like uh, uh, add-ons. Uh, the base compiler probably has only like functions and applications. Etc. Everything else is like libraries. You can define your own maybe if you want, if you, you are free to do. So, okay, I'll just move on. So this is a pure function. A pure function is something which takes an A and gives a, a B. So, but if you want more, there are something called effects. So when I broadly said about effects, so when I say effects, it's that a function can do more. It can take a different set of arguments. When I say just a, a to B, it's just like, uh, yeah, you can't do much with it, right? It's like, yeah. But let's say you want to return multiple A's. Instead of saying one A, I'm just going to give you multiple A's. I want, I'll give you a list. List is actually an effect. I'm saying like, I'm not giving you one value. The B here is not a single value anymore. It could be a list. When I say list of B, it's, an, it's actually an effect saying that, you know, I have multiple values. You choose whatever you want. Or it could be a maybe. When I say maybe, like, I mean, I can give you an A, but sometimes you, I might not give you an A. You're just being very explicit there. Or a tuple. When I say tuple of A and B, I'm giving you an A and I'll also give you a B. You use it whatever you want. So then there are other things like uh, uh, there is a reader. One of the best things here is the app, I would say. So app is an abstraction over callbacks. I'll, I'll, I'll I have a slide on how it actually works. So how many of you have heard of this word, monads? Okay. All right. So I'm not even going to go there. So monads are basically computation builders. Almost all uh, programming patterns can be explained in uh, monads and uh, think of it as like the basic version of the, 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 the distilled version of callbacks. Um, so, so, and uh, do blocks are a syntactic uh, sugar on top of monads. I mean, if people have used uh, Scala, there is this uh, thing of uh, for, for uh, comprehensions and things like that. So, 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 uh, so you can do something like that. So basically like, uh, you're saying like, while bound from the element from two to square root, then bound from the element, something like this, you read. Syntax, syntax. It's not a, it, it's, it's a, it's, it's a function. Basically it's a function. It's actually a function which takes two numbers, see it's prefix actually. Two functions that gives you a list. The dot dot is actually a function. So pure, empty, everything is function. If then else is actually a keyword, but yeah. So this is over a maybe. So this we did over this. So every time we had a list operation, this is like uh, operating over a list. This is over operating over a list. This operates over a list. This operates over a uh, list. So, so this is like something from our actual project, production uh, code. So this is like, uh, let's say you have a string, you got a string from, uh, which said it's just a log line, uh, and you want to get the time out of it. So what you do is like you pass the object, uh, it could be a, a invalid JSON. So that time it could return nothing as well. It could be it could be a maybe of JSON. Ah, so it will just short circuit that. It doesn't execute the rest of the part of code. So probably we'll discuss later as to like how it will short circuit or not. So basically this is a maybe. So this is like you are looking at the key called metadata, which it also could be maybe that that maybe cannot be there. So and it looks like imperative code. It looks like imperative code, but actually it's like doing a lot of other things in between. I'll show you even more uh, nice stuff. This is actually uh, these calls are actually like let's say real API calls. They actually have a success callback, failure callback, all these things. But this will be fulfilled only if it is a, a successful value. Null is actually checking if the account is uh, empty. The list. So null is actually like a, 
it's a function which actually takes a list and tells whether the list is empty. It's not it's not the JavaScript. It's a string. And it asynchronous asynchronous you get me uh maybe let's say first you say what do you do? You will make a callback, you say like get account on on the return back, you give me the uh bind it to account to some function which tells like if the account is empty, uh, empty meaning like the empty list. Like parse it, whatever like parse and all that you have that I'm not worried about. If it's empty return nothing, otherwise make another API call which says like get the transaction for every account and uh, you know get the maximum by comparing all the transactions and get all the transactions. Basically like you read it like English. Uh we'll discuss it later. I still don't have time. <laughs> no. No, no macros. Um uh, or this, this is something, this is a framework we actually had. So this is like called, uh, this is an entire app. Entire app on running on the mobile. Uh, I mean, like there are other things beneath, but the thing is like, this is the actual flow of the app. So we have created this flow monad, think of it like a thing which actually interacts with the user or with the uh, network and all. Let's say you first show the flat screen, nothing to get from there. You just fetch it off, let's, just, uh, let's say the bill payment or read that flow. Kind of like uh, get your operator, like uh, out of that you have the UI shows the operator, like just ask, when he selects a uh, uh, operator, you capture that in the variable operator and like, like ask for the mobile number, ask for the amount and then like uh, make a report call to do this and then finally say the bill pay the result and like that. So this is an actual app we have. And I mean like you can do, I mean there are a lot of other things hidden, how it displays, all this thing, but like the, the gist of the entire app can be done here. In fact, product managers can actually write, write this kind of code. Yeah, just like uh, the four bill payment pages of the mobile number and all that. Like, show. Yeah, it's like this display. Yeah, it's like UI dot means it's like display sort of. Alright. So, interacting with JS, I don't want to get too much. So, you can actually write foreign function interfaces. So, if you have a curried function, uh, which actually is weird, you can import it. Otherwise, there is a macro, there is a, not a macro, sorry. There is a uh, type called fn2, which takes two, uh, this thing, I don't know, uh, I don't know how it's, okay, I'll let me, oops, sorry. Uh, oops, the bar. All right, so, so basically like, uh, um, it can take two integers and give back an integer. Uh, you can uh, import uh, types from JavaScript into PureScript. Uh, yes, yes, you can. You can export and import functions. So it's not, uh, yeah, it has FFI. So most of the things that are not in uh, JavaScript, uh, PureScript, you can actually import. So when you use the FFI, you know, if I say export the I if you want to find from your JavaScript, can you say No, you can just like write, it's the same file name, that's all. You have like main.prs, you have main.js, that's it. The, the, that's the convention. Yeah, yeah. You are kind kind of like export. I mean, like UI and dot is like a module. UI dot UI is a module. Huh? Ah, yes, yes. It's a single file. Finally, you get a big file. That's it. You run your things on top of it. And yeah. So, so this so JavaScript uh, objects kind of like uh, transfer to this uh, named tuple with this one, and arrays cannot be uh, multi. Uh, Types they have to be like a single type. Uh, so there is a library called foreign, which uh, which is used to work when the when the types are unknown. It uh, it actually handles the cases. So this is like a uh, effective function. Like it has to accept, it can accept, it can it cannot flow. It will kind of like return multiple names when it's not a uh, string and all those things. So that's what it means. Um, yeah. So finally, you can export. So this is uh, fine. So and this is how you import effects. So when you say it's an effectful function, you just return a thunk. So it's, uh, so, so instead of like saying like tag to uh, so let's say there is a uh, format log logging function which like says uh, with a tag and a message log it. You you return a thunk uh, which has like the uh, tag and message tied, but the it can be called later at a later point of time. So basically, this is an effectful function. And uh, there are so many web frameworks available. 
you have elm like uh, web frameworks uh, there are component based there is a pure script react uh, which has good interop with react there is frp based uh, presto is something we had just pay have developed uh, to write mobile and web apps yes 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 they are all already protected uh, supported in pure script no no this just allows you to work in a frp like syntax that's all Yes, it's not. I mean, like there are libraries. I mean, like not in the language, but there are a lot of libraries. You can pick and choose whatever you want. So in our backend, we have this flow. In UI, we have this uh, uh, Elm-like thing. Uh, we have like events coming in, like user events and all those things. Sorry, I'm going a lot of time. So we have like virtual DOM uh, available. You can manipulate your virtual DOM. At JustPay, this is how our stack looks like. We use it both for the front end and mobile UI. Uh, so back end and mobile UI. Uh, we have more than hundred line, hundred thousand lines of code. So, okay, so that's it, this last slide. And uh, we use it for markup and business logic. We write English like code. And uh, we have something called free monads. And we write DSLs in that and get away with it. <laughs> that's it. Any questions? All right. Super. Questions? In uh, pure script, can we like uh, uh, whenever we use JavaScript, so we take the values from the UI, like text box or anything? Is it possible? Is it like DOM? Uh, you can write your own DOM. Uh, you just take the find element by ID in the DOM and like you know import it as this importing. Like you can import it as whatever you want, and then like yeah, that's it. This is how you like import functions and. So let's say you have this JavaScript function that is just putting with a kind of like imported. But make sure that anything which you think is a side effect is actually imported as a side effect. That's the only thing. If it's Thank pure, you. if you add is pure, but uh, logging is not pure because you are actually like logging with a date and time. Right? So so date and time change every time you log it. So, so there I'm importing it as a default. So you can import whatever you want. You can export whatever you want. It's fully interrupt with Java, JavaScript. You can have your own uh, node modules, uh, interact with them as well. You can require them in your JS files and import it. Everything is fully supported. So we can use like Java, normal JavaScript plus this at so, the same so, time. So initially when we started off, we had a lot of JavaScript code. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't we, we didn't start off with JavaScript. We had a lot of JavaScript code. We finally like wrapped everything, then made changes here, made changes here, then slowly duplicated. That's how we typically move, and you can use this independently in any small module if you are able to take your decision. There. Thanks. Any other one last question? Okay. How's the community in Pure um, It's pretty helpful. Slack is there. There's a good Slack community. Uh, Documentation is good on Pursuit. Um, there are a couple of good tutorials. Uh, and I think between Slack and uh, documentation, there, there is a couple of books. There is try.pyoscope.org. You can like check it out. Try. Dot. So this is like a, a online place where you can try Pyoscope. Uh, so yeah, okay. So this is how you write markup, and uh, so so this is FRP. So just like show you a quick demo. You can kind of like add these sliders. So this is FRP. So you have a PR function called markup, which is a combination of three strings. And when you change the slider, you just change the font size. And this is the function comes. So you can change your, I mean, like, these are all like, you know, uh, this is FRP, uh, Flare is a FRP based. So, yeah, behaviors is another FRP based thing. Thank you. So community is okay. I mean, like, it's, it's not 
very big but people who are there are really committed i would say